Hello, my dear doctor. So one of the most important hot topic, like the five star topic that will be really set up in your exam and one of the most complicated topic in cardiology, that is the arrhythmias. So we divide it into the arrhythmias, as I said, that is tachyarrhythmias and bradyarrhythmias. So tachyarrhythmias, once again, we put a name before the tachyarrhythmias, that is the periarrest arrhythmias. It does mean before the cardiac arrest or after the cardiac arrest, the patient just aborted or survived from the cardiac arrest. There are the varieties of the arrhythmias that happen. This is called periarrest arrhythmias. So usually the, the guidelines before the given by the resuscitation council, by the UK and also other guidelines like European guidelines, they put a bit of complicated management planning of the arrest and also the periodist cardiac arrhythmias. They put it, make it simplified. Please just follow me what is written in your notes. The 2010 Resuscitation Council UK guidelines have simplified the advice given for the management of periodist tachycardias. Separate algorithms for the management of broad complex tachycardia, narrow complex tachycardia and atrial fibrillation have been replaced by the unified one unified treatment algorithm. Following basic ABC assessment, the patients are classified as being stable or unstable according to the presence of any adverse signs. What are the adverse signs? It's within the shock. Shock means the hypertension, systolic blood pressure less than 90 mm mercury, pallor and sweating. Cold, clammy extremities, confusion or impaired consciousness syncope, micro ischemia, and heart failure. If any one of the above signs are present, then the synchronized DC shock should be given. Treatment following this is given according to whether the QRS complex is narrow or broad, and whether the rhythm is regular or irregular. The full treatment algorithm can be found at the resuscitation counseling website and I would like to discuss from your notes that is written the broad complex tachycardia after that the regular and irregular. If it is regular broad complex tachycardia it is written in your notes assume that this is VT until otherwise proved unless previously it is confirmed that is SVT with bundle branch block. The even is regular broad complex tachycardia, the loading dose of amiodarone given should be followed by the 24 hours infusion. If it is the irregular but the broad complex, the diagnosis is the atrial fibrillation with bundle branch block treat as for narrow complex tachycardia. Irregular broad complex, another disease is the polymorphic VT, torsus D4, that is the IV magnesium. Narrow complex tachycardia is regular and irregular. Once again, narrow complex tachycardia regular, that is vagal maneuvers followed by IV adenosine. If ever unsuccessful, consider the diagnosis atrial flutter and control the rate by BBs, means beta blockers. Irregular probable atrial fibrillation. If onset less than 48 hours, consider electrical or chemical cardioversion. Rate controlled by the beta blocker or digoxin and anticoagulation. So, dear doctor, it's very much important to manage the periodic tachyarrhythmias. Just follow me. Tachyarrhythmias. So, whenever we are seeing any tachyarrhythmias, or maybe the Brady arrhythmias, we'll see the next topic that we'll discuss. We should, first of all, assessment of the ABC assessment that we do at the emergency department. And immediately after that, we look forward that whether the patient having the adverse signs is present or not. Adverse signs or adverse features is present or not. Adverse signs are classified in your notes, shock, cold, clammy, extremity, syncope, marker ischemia, and heart failure. But what I am saying, the SS box will be helpful for the cardiac tachyarrhythmias, the adverse signs that we can remember 
the single word that s once again the s once again the ssc that will be helpful sse means ssc will be helpful for the ss box once again for the tachyarrhythmias whether advert signs is present or not if the advert signs is present or absent present means one of the advert signs of sscc is present so the patient should be considered is unstable if it is absent all of the signs the patient is stable and these unstable patients should be given the dc shock that is our protocol so let's see what does this SSCE means S for shock once again S for syncope S for shock S for syncope C for consciousness this is important and C for cardiac failure along with C for chest pain. Dear doctor, these are important. Must remember and must to get all these SSCC features by your heart. So that's why this is important. So once again, SS box for the adverse signs of tachyarrhythmias and also both the bradyarrhythmias also the same thing, SSC, as for shock, S for syncope and C for cardiac failure, C for consciousness means the consciousness impairment and C for chest pain as well. So S for shock, S for syncope, C for consciousness impairment, C for cardiac failure and C for chest pain. This box will be helpful to remember any one of the sign of SSCC present, so this patient is unstable, so we need to do the DC shock. So shock means, I say, bok. Bok means BP, at least systolic BP is 90 millimeter of mercury. Must remember, dear doctor. So only the shock, the patient having the shock, as I said, the first feature is one of the most important features among all of these features, adverse signs, adverse features. If the shock is present, the treatment will be the shock. So the box for the tachyarrhythmias, shock treatment is shock. DC shock and having the shock. I hope that you understood. And next part, immediately after the patient, the DC shock, the patient becomes stable and stable patient are classified whether the patient complexes. The next part, we are looking for complexes. Next, number two, we are looking for complex, means QRS complex. We are looking into the QRS complexes. Let's see how we are doing. Let's see. The next important part, as I say, number one, we discussed about the adverse features or adverse signs. And number two important that the complexes means the QRS complex, whether it's broad and narrow. And third important point is regular or irregular means tachyarrhythmias are ACR that will be helpful ACR so here's the two important that is the QRS broad complex and narrow complex tachycardias If the complexes are broad, then we are also classified as regular and irregular. 
Same thing, if it is narrow, we are classified into regular and irregular complexes. So the broad complex regular, irregular, broad, narrow complex regular and irregular. As I said, irregular complexes, definitely the diagnosis should be the atrial fibrillation, whatever the broad and narrow. You have to think about it. Next part, that the regular broad complex tachycardia, the diagnosis is VT until otherwise proved. The differential diagnosis is SVT with bundle branch block. Just put it within the bracket. Next part, irregular broad complex tachycardia, that is atrial fibrillation once again, but put with bundle branch block. Once again, broad complex, irregular, atrial fibrillation with aberrant conduction or maybe the bundle branch block. But the most important thing we must remember that is polymorphic VT. These two diagnoses. Regular narrow complex tachycardia is SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. And we always assume that this is AVNRT. We'll discuss a little bit later what is AVNRT. But just put it here. Broad complex, regular tachycardia, always think about this is VT, ventricular tachycardia. So it is proved that is the QRS complex is broad. So as I said, this is the number two point and this is the number three point and number one was the adverse signs that we already discussed. So this is broad complex tachycardia. Tachycardia, you see the broad, the QRS are the broad, so you should assume that this is VT until otherwise proved. It may be the SVT with bundle branch block if it is proved earlier. Second important point that is irregular complex, definitely atrial fibrillation, irregular complex as I said, Irregular complex, as I said, atrial fibrillation, whatever the broad or narrow. But the most important DD is polymorphic VT in irregular broad complex tachycardia. As I said, broad complex regular or irregular, this is VT. VT, but this is VT for regular, this is monomorphic VT. We can write mono VT, this is poly VT. All right, so same thing, the, one of the most important thing, just to make it simplify, if it is VT, the treatment should be the IV amiodarone. Just write it down, that will be helpful. Just remember the amiodarone is the treatment of choice. And we'll discuss later about the treatment of other things, but just to remember for polymorphic VT, only magnesium is the treatment. So once again, the, if you're getting monomorphic VT, the treatment will be the amiodarone is the treatment. Polymorphic VT is a multi, means MG, means magnesium. Next part is the supraventricular tachycardia, we'll discuss later, and the atrial fibrillation management also discuss later in the next lecture. So thank you very much, my dear. Thank you once again. We'll move to the next lecture. But the most important summary is, whenever you are getting the broad, whatever the tachyarrhythmias, whatever, the first things consider the adverse features. After that, if the adverse features are present, the patient is SSC, C, any one of the features, so you should give a patient shock. If it is not present, means the patient is stable or you make the shock, then make the patient stable. Whatever stable patient, then think about the complexes. And after that, think about the regular and irregular means the box is the ACR for the tachyarrhythmias 
will be helpful to detect all of the complexes and all of your diagnosis. So thank you very much once again. We'll move to the next and we'll discuss more and more. Thank you very much.